Twitter. Here we go. All right. This is a uh, All right. field trip episode for me. I'm at my mom's house and I'm in her little paint studio. So that's awesome. This is the oh, one, goodness. this is the one night I could actually I could <laughs> could start drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the worst thing. I have I have the equipment and I have uh years of listening to John talk about it. So um it could happen. Uh I won't share it. <laughs> No, uh, we're going to get started. If you're here to draw with us, this is uh, this is Visual Arts Passage and Illustration Isolation. Uh, you're in the right place. We're going to get started in a minute. Um, Jimmy, what's Visual Arts Passage? Yeah, we offer online uh, mentorship classes. So if you're not familiar with that, um, we focus on a few different types of programs. We have a character design program. We have a, an illustration program. And then Cassandra, who is... Uh, drawing with us. Uh, you can see uh, her her setup uh, face down on the desk right there. Uh, Cassandra is leading our commercial gallery uh, art program, uh, which is starting off in January. And so oh, our program, it's very different. Uh, you've probably heard of like online schools before, online classes. Our program puts you on a track where you are uh, being uh, led by a mentor in a series of courses that are laid out over about a 12 month period. And uh, you're given all the equipment and tools and uh, guidance to build a career in the, the profession and the arts that you're most interested in. So it's highly custom tailored. So uh, lots and lots of success stories. Yeah, it's tons of success. We've had, you know, Miriam Martinsich, uh, one of our students, uh, Society of Illustrator gold medal winner which is a big deal. If you're not familiar with Society of Illustrators and you want to be an illustrator, you should probably learn about it. <laughs> Love it's her work. Deal. Love her work. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, this is also the holiday episode. So on that note, I'm going to get it started. Good deal. <laughs> the holiday intro. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. I tried to play it under the theme song and... Uh, Decided not to. <laughs> this is a pretty long video without the theme song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is really dragging out. I could have cut it a little bit. But... So where's this going, Timmy? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> all right. John, it's all you. All right. Here we go. Let me reshare here. All right. Uh, this is our our holiday episode, but it's also our third night in a row with Matthew Salacuse's The Negative Collection. And so, um, if you don't know, this is a beautiful collection of work that Matthew has hunted down in um, uh, estate sales, garage sales, any kind of sale, any kind of uh, flea market um, to find negatives. Uh, film and print them and not knowing who the people are. He does a great job searching, trying to figure out who the photographers are, but it's absolutely amazing the finds that he's had. Um, we've done past Muhammad Ali. Tonight we're doing our first pose is of uh, James Brown. Uh, again, these are found negatives and it's amazing. Not just the, there's some beautiful photography in here, but just the, the really famous people that, you know, this is just found, found photography. Um, it's excellent. So uh, first pose, James Brown. Second pose, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Third pose is uh, from a, a shot from a, an Easter parade in New York City. I just thought it was a beautiful photograph. And then on the, uh, the third pose, we're gonna give you options of this, of Pele, just because it was timely. And then here's your third option. And you can, you can choose to do all of them. You can choose to do one figure out of them. You can do whatever you want. This is our 40 minute pose. So um, 
in between, we like to post our work to um, hashtag illustration isolation um, on Instagram, and we'll take a look at the, all the work at the end of the night. So I'll try to talk about what we're doing and uh, what Cassandra's doing. I think there's going to be a couple of at least one other joining us tonight. But uh, we're ready to go, Timmy. All right, let's get rolling. And we'll be so starting there with the Godfather of Soul. Yep. The first pose is uh, 20 minutes. I'll drop the link uh, in the chat. Um, if you want to join us on Discord, um, I will also send that link to everybody. Uh, Discord's really fun. If you're familiar with Discord, um, you know, it's where a lot of our community chat, share work, and you can connect during the week. Um, if you're not familiar with Discord, don't worry about it. You can use the Q&A. Um, we do like to remind people if you have questions, if you want to talk about, if you want us to talk about something specific in art, um, we will answer them. The only questions we don't tackle are the ones we've tackled like a million times on the show. Um, but uh, feel free to use the Q and A to ask and guide the conversation. I'm I'm laughing about at uh, that large head I have behind me that's over my shoulder of Franz Klein, the artist staring at me. Um, it's intimidating. <laughs> He's judging you. He's judging me, and he should. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to change cameras here. So, Cassandra, you're saying you're just you're just slammed, getting ready for shows or commissions? Uh, shows. I just. Um, I don't know, everything really, really picked up this year. I did 22 shows this year. Wow. That's all? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind Actually, of a maybe 23. A year. Only 22 I to, shows. I, I may have to recount. And like in that were like two mini solos. So. That's amazing. So if. You're all wondering why Cassandra's teaching that class for us. <laughs> uh, because she's got it figured out. Trying, Again. trying for sure. So yeah, things just kind of got got busy, which is really great. Um, but like, you know, next year is is really booked already. So I have three shows in January. So I'm needing to get all the work ready. How much work, how, how would you summarize the amount of work for each show? Well, it depends. Like I'm in a show, uh, a small work show, and I'm doing four pieces for it. And they're small, but one of them is a double portrait and then three other little ones. And then the other show is a piece that's like 18 and a half inches high and like really elaborate. So like that is a really elaborate piece. The third show is a piece I actually already did. It was one of those ones where like I entered a piece and it it juried into a, a surrealism show. So that'll be fun. I didn't have to do work for that, but it's still, you know, five pieces that I need to have ready for early January. So that's what I'm getting through. I have the double portrait done, the elaborate big portrait done, and I just finished one of the small ones. So I have two, two more small ones to go. Well, that's just a few hours of work for you. <laughs> Yeah, well, more than that. but yeah, so a very good problem, but around the holiday season, you know, it's busy with family stuff and professional stuff. John, you, is it some, is like preparing for, when we talk about gallery work with you, John, is it often shows or is it usually just going to a gallery? Uh, yeah. It's keeping inventory in the gallery. Um, right now, that's kind of what I'm working for right now is uh, had, had some good luck selling things and, um, you know, keeping the, keeping things uh, inventory for the galleries is an important thing. <laughs> um, they invest time and effort and, you know, you're basically, you know, they make money from their walls that's the real estate on their walls. I'm and, sure this is different. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say that if you if you don't if you're not able to uh, supply them work, uh, you're not doing your part of the job. So, and and I'm feeling real guilty. So I'm I'm trying to catch up right now. 
I'm sure it uh, changes gallery to gallery, but like, would you say there's a pretty consistent average of like how much work a gallery expects to be able to have inventory? I'm going to let Cassandra answer that. She, I, I'm interested to hear what she has to say about that. Uh, I think it's very dependent upon gallery. Like some galleries I've worked with only do group shows. They don't do solos. And some galleries I work with is like a show to show basis. And then other galleries do want to have some backstock of my work. So I have like three galleries that I work with all the time that specifically have backstock of my pieces and they all do a wonderful job of selling. So it's it's very dependent on on the gallery. Do you prefer to be in a group show or a solo show? I love group shows. I mean, solo shows are great, but it's a lot of pressure and typically a lot of work versus group shows. Like I'm able to send one piece and like be amongst a lot of great other artists. And I got I, I fangirl out. I just love seeing all the other art. So I, I love seeing what everyone does, especially when the group shows are on like interesting themes. Like I was in this one um, that was called Dance Macabre. So it was really fun to see how everybody else interpreted the theme. So I, I love it all, but yeah, I really do like, I, you know, solo shows are great, but it's a lot of pressure personally. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I always think of like hip hop albums. It's like, <laughs> The, the collaboration is always <laughs> you're like best off <laughs> collaborating with like a large team you, yeah you know, it will, and it's like so much work that you're doing and then you can't do other shows when you're setting up for a solo because you know yeah. like I'll be doing like 15 16 pieces for that one show so my whole focus is on that um so right. it's just kind of a quiet time too when you don't have a lot of shows stacked in between I can't imagine though, also like how many people go to a show loving one artist and then come back and they're like, did you see that, that artist, Cassandra, cause like, you know, that artist Cassandra, like that was cool. Like they learn about your art. Like for, it just like broadens word of mouth, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know, go see your work and they fall in love with someone else's. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No, that's, what's great is like, you get to see lots of other people's work and it's exciting right. to see how everyone styles all come together in a show it's just I find it really exciting and then you also get to see the taste of the gallery because they bring all these artists together and I think that that's always kind of its own unique voice in itself because they they put that mix into action so I love seeing how all of that turns out yeah and a pleasure John do you find yourself doing like all-nighters to get stuff to your gallery or do you pretty no. good with no you don't do that stuff anymore not anymore yeah. um i got up at i i was painting at eight this morning about 8 15 yeah and i went out and got took an hour and a half off and got lunch and that was pretty much i at 5 40 i picked up my oil palette and my uh yeah took my took my painting off my drawing board and uh switched to pastel to draw tonight so i've been sitting here pretty much all day <laughs> usually today i missed but uh because it because i was so busy i but i'm usually go out and will exercise for an hour but not today Do you feel like when you used to do an all, like, let's say you used to do an all-nighter for your work, did did you think that it affected the quality of your work? Yeah, or, usually if I had to do an all-nighter, it usually made it better. <laughs> because, oh, really? Really? Um, well, because I, that was my only choice, you know? Mm. And if I didn't, if I didn't, uh, I wouldn't get, I've gotten it done. No, I meant like... <laughs> That's like, a, well, it got finished. So yeah, it was better. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, you got you to be on time and you got to show yeah. up. So No, I meant like, do you think that like when your time management allows you to do it, 
you know, like reasonably, do you think the work is better or do you like the burning oh, yeah. of the candle at both? No, I, 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 yeah, I only dealt with that pressure because I had to. Right. You know, you know cause you had to do the work. And that was, yeah. you know, editorial market that that's what it did. Made you do that stuff. Right. Yeah. You're not talking about gallery, the gallery world as much. No, no, right? or, or even like book work or anything like that. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're doing cover work and you're staying up all night, you're just a really bad time manager. Cassandra, so you did, you did 23 shows? It's either 22 or 23. I, I okay. lost count. Of Let's just go ahead. We'll give you 23 on the record, <laughs> but 20, like, uh, do you, have you gotten to a point where you really have to be mindful about what you say yes and no to? Yeah, this, this is the year where, you know, really great galleries for the first time, I had to start to say no to some shows. And that was really hard for me because I still, you know, I feel like I'm still building a lot with my name, but I also need to respect that to do the best piece I do. I did have to start saying no to some stuff. Wow. Is there like a, I mean, you just have to know when, right? Yeah. Well, I have an average of paintings per year based on the galleries I work with, like what kind of paintings I'm doing for them, like how, how many I can accomplish. And so I kind of topped out at that realizing if I have like some mini solos, I, I average about 40 pieces a year, give or take four paintings. And so if like anything beyond that, I, I just am not able to get to with my schedule with my kids. Right. Yeah. That's a balancing act. Yeah. And then there's like the pressure of, I mean, I kind of remember there being a time when I freelanced. It's like, no is a pretty scary thing because mm -hmm. like at the end of the month, like when the bills are due, but this is, I'm speaking for myself personally, you're like, man, <laughs> wish I could go back and say yes to that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, maybe you miscalculate or, you know, I don't know, maybe there's this like hard work guilt thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, well, and there's, yeah. there's the whole like FOMO of like, oh, they're, they're really great people and they put on good shows. I don't, I don't want to miss out like on this great show, but you also have to be aware of like how much you can accomplish and you don't want things to diminish because you push too hard. But then there's also like, you know, it's all a gamble. You're just hoping that that month somebody is going to want to buy the piece in the show that you're doing. So it is, you know, it's a bit of a gamble. Like I, I feel very lucky that things have been going well, things have been selling well, but that, that can change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John, as you've gotten like as you've matured as an artist, do you have more of, appreci of, of an appreciation for working in the gallery world versus like the more commercial editor, not commercial editor, but like editorial or publishing or? Well, um, you know, because of the time and, and the problems that were thrown at you, illustration is a great training ground for me. Um, just having to move quickly and put, learn how to, you know, put pictures together um, at a pretty clip, fast clip. Um, I learned a lot. Um, I thought, I think it was a really good kind of like training ground for that. Um, I'm, I, the gallery world was not real, uh, representational painting was not real popular when I got out of school. So illustration afforded, you know, me that, that representational type of work, drawing and painting that I wanted to do. Um, but if, I mean, if the galleries were what they were now, I probably would have started straight out painting because that's the type of work I like the most. How are the galleries different now? 
Well, so most of the galleries were driven by abstract expressionism, and they're much more open to the representational painting. Yeah, where it's about drawing and design and painting is is uh, is very popular. Also, yeah. like the internet has just made galleries and artists more accessible to each other. Like you can see what they're looking for by what they show. And, you know, like, I don't know, it feels more approachable across so many great distances. What are the general attitudes of Cassandra? Like when you, because I'm assuming you work with a lot of directors at these um, galleries. Mm -hmm. What do you think is like their, based on, based on your experience and like talking with them, what do they seem to be like most concerned about? or focused on maybe. um like they've never they never voice concern with me they've always typically just oh yeah i meant just not like not concern about your work or concern about the show but just like what do you think that they're like most focused on professionally for their gallery like selling yeah <laughs> well and like sure that's a good starting spot right yeah and also it's really interesting um to see like which galleries choose to push more social media and which ones don't like i think it's 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 hard to say because some are very are very different from each other like some are able to really get a lot of public in because of social media and it's very very successful and others are are like a little bit more intimate and word of mouth and both are successful it's just kind of interesting seeing what works for which gallery But I mean, deadlines is everything. Like watching, watching how hard it is to wrangle so many artists and group shows to keep them on deadline. I mean, it's like watching herding cats. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys are gonna be able to guess who this is, and it's. I think it's absurd because I I think that they should be way more proud of their progress. But I've been feeling discouraged with my progress recently. How do you determine success when it feels like your career is advanced, advancing the way it needs to? I didn't um, think Ray was going to be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good dig. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, you know, career advancement is career advancement how success is measured. Like, I find in? the no. feeling that you're having right now is often during the time of most growth. Like, yeah. You are overwhelmed because you're learning so much and taking so much in. I found that the times that I felt the way that you feel right now is often when like you're changing and, and progressing and it's hard to visualize. But like, I think often that means good things. If that, that may sound weird, but I see that kind of. Was that an ocean question? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I just like I don't know how old ocean. You're doing great. Just keep doing. Ocean's twenty five. Ocean is twenty five. Come on. <laughs> ocean, you're doing really great, but I totally understand how you're feeling. Like, yeah, it, but you're really building up your portfolio and you're improving. And I think like where are you right now is you kind of just you're sitting on top of a rocket and you're about to take off but you're just gassing it up so like i think you just got to keep pushing you got to keep believing that like this is where you want to be and keep working yeah i i i asked the age i also think age is a really stupid mile marker that people use uh for like like generating an idea of where they're at you know they they like will Google who you know who did what at what age and it's like not a good not a good habit but um, twenty five is in, incredibly young uh, it's like wildly young and like you could like <laughs> like you're doing what you love if you're doing what you love at twenty five and know you want to be great at it that is and you're already you've like ocean you've like already like logged some considerable time and effort into it i think that's amazing because i don't think i even like realized what i loved doing until i was like 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 a year ago 
<laughs> like, like it's, I don't know. I've known people that like fell in love with what they did when they were like in their like mid thirties, like it's late thirties. It happens in their forties, you know, like, um, so you've got plenty of time. There's nothing to rush. I just think you just need to enjoy it more. It's, it's hard though. I understand that feeling of like, you're progressing, but not at the ideal speed, but you have to give yourself some grace that you're working really hard and you are doing really well and you are improving, like celebrate the small stuff. I always think about uh, Rodney Dangerfield did not have like any success until he was like 48. <laughs> I mean, he That's was like- Wild to think about. He didn't look the part until he was 48. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He just looked like a cartoon character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just tons of examples of it, but I always try to remember there was a film editor. This happened years ago. He was, it was like six or seven years ago and he won best editing, uh, an Academy Award for best editing. And he went up and he was like 80s, late 80s. He'd never been nominated for anything, anything at all. And he went up and in his acceptance speech, he just goes, well, I guess I'm a late bloomer. And that was it. I was like, oh, that was awesome. That was that. it. That was the whole, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I've sometimes learned, maybe you can chime in on this guys, but I've sometimes learned that like, I got the thing, I achieved the thing I wanted like five years after I hoped I would, or maybe that thing never actually happened. And I realized like years later, like it was kind of a blessing in disguise, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if, if I had achieved what I wanted to when I was 24, first off my life would be like very different, but I also don't think it would have been good for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was, if, yeah, if I had gotten everything I wanted when I was 25, I would, I wouldn't have handled that well. I don't think, I don't think I would have had the maturity for it. Not saying that you wouldn't have ocean, but you would do great ocean, but I don't know. Well, I mean, I worked at Trader Joe's, the grocery store for 14 years. Like it was very comfortable and it felt safe. And yeah. it, because of that time, it gave me the time to like, travel and really experiment you know at home and not have to worry about a paycheck that way with the art that I was doing like I was able to do the stuff that was fun and just keep it fun and enjoy it I, I wasn't ready for this kind of schedule until you know just a few years ago when everything started to work out that way and I, I pivoted yeah the I I mean me creatively me the the worst things that have happened when I used to direct stuff was I was given too much too early. The, those were the, I was given too large of an opportunity too early on. And, uh, and I blew it. <laughs> like, like I like face planted on a couple of those and it was just cause they were like way too big for and I'm, I'm sure, I don't know, John, I bet that that probably happens all the time with like illustration, especially. Yeah, probably. Um, and I, I, I was, I was lucky. I had so much good information given to me and it made it kind of an easier path than most because, you know, I, I understood the industry really well. Um, I wasn't very good. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, I started working really early on and um, learned a lot on the job. Let's put it that way. Um, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people do, but uh, I was really fortunate. Yeah, there's like a, there's like a certain amount of like learning curve that's like great and perfect, you know, like you're just like, not totally drowning in over your head, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Yeah, but, you know, understanding, I think what people have the hardest time with, and just because, you know, it's getting better educationally, but um, 
the reason we focus so much on career uh, and industry, like working, is because I think that's what really people really want to know. Is they want to know how do I, you know, how do I make this part of my life? How do I make it, make this my job? And um, you know, that's what our education is about. And that's where I looked at education. Like, man, mine was really different from most people's because the career was like in my house. You know, the 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 industry was in my house, and I I, I had a big advantage. Didn't make me a better drawer or anything. I had to learn all that stuff. But met I'm, your dad. Met your dad was a really established working illustrator. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it was I was around the industry at a very young age. Um, how did you how did you all keep yourselves from getting discouraged with your art when you were learning? That's a question from the audience. <laughs> I'll let everybody else answer that. Um, I, like, I think it's just I wanted it so bad. It's not that I was particularly exceptional. I just really wanted to figure it out. So I just kept trying. And then when I was finally working, you know, then you just have deadlines that you need to meet. So you you figure it out even faster. And you just, as you continue to do it, you just get better and better. So I think I was able to see this small changes as improvements. And I had to learn to focus on my personal improvements and not compare as much. I would look to people for inspiration, but I would not, I no longer looked at people as like, oh, this is my competition. I've got to beat them. It's more of like, oh, I'd love to get to that level. I, I can see I'm not there yet. Right. Well, Cassandra, I, I honestly thought for the longest time I could do no right because, you know, everybody I was looking at was like, the dude, best, like best all, all I could think about is you were saying your advantage, but that's so much pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, but it there was pressure, but there was also so much good information. It made things, you know, faster. I mean, I didn't really start drawing till I was 16. And I just didn't want to do it until then. And then, you know, started getting, I think the, I got my first piece in the Society of Illustrators show when I was in uh, 21, I think. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. And I was. Yeah, so Ocean, don't use John English as a, a as a mile marker. <laughs> no, well, I mean, there's there's more obvious people to look at than me. I mean, it's like, um, Last night in study hall, we were talking, you know, wishing Catherine Lamb happy birthday. And she's one of the busiest illustrators in the world right now. And she's having her either 26th or 27th birthday. I can't, I couldn't remember if she was 26 turning 27 or 25. Turning yeah, but I don't want to discourage people by like just talking about like people in there. I'm just saying th those are tremendous. Uh, that, that, that is an anomaly. I mean, yeah, that's like a major way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, like John, like your life is like the epitome of Malcolm Gladwell's outliers. Like, you, you know, the the environment you grew up in that you talk about, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fact that you you had access, you know, it's like it's like Bill Gates having access to like the elite coding school that like only two existed in the United States at the time, you know. Right. Uh, and just by like a freakish deal of his mom's job, like it's it's a very similar narrative. Well, I think uh, the, the thing is, is everybody's journey looks differently. I, you know, mine doesn't sync up at all to the way that John or Catherine's or Sterling's did. Like I had a completely different path and it was totally fine, but it's it, it's different pacing. And so if you're pressuring yourself to be at a certain place at a certain time, like that's that's a lot of excess pressure that's like not going to get you there. Like that's, that's hard and that's hard on yourself. I yeah. totally agree with that. Well, that, that's, that's the reason I was so interested in education. I was looking around at, you know, peers of mine. I was looking at, you know, guys like George Pratt, who's my age. And I was like, 
how did you figure this crap out on your own? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is hard. I mean, I, I had all the, I had great information and it was very difficult for me. I had to work insane hours to get any good at it. Somebody, <laughs> somebody asked, how do you become an illustration artist? That is a question that takes uh, a couple years to answer. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, you got to get good at it, uh, as you know, John has said many times, and uh, you got to kind of identify your corner of the industry and what you want to do. Um, we offer mentorships that specifically are designed to help you build a portfolio to start a career in illustration. Um, that's a that's a that question. That's like a thirty prong question. Um, uh, somebody asked how much of the illustration industry is who you know um, well not socially who you know who you figure out working in the industry you become aware of who's doing what in the industry who you know as far as I had advantages because I understood what what I was supposed to do in the industry didn't and I, I, I had good information but I had to learn the same thing everybody else had to do. I had to get good enough to work in the industry. And nobody, our industry, the illustration business is really honest. They're, you're not going to get hired unless you're good. And they, you know, your, your portfolio is everything. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if you're, if you work at it, you get good at it. There's, um, there's a lot out there for you. Uh, but knowing somebody like as a friend, an art director is not going to hire you because of, you know, you're close. In fact, that would probably be a reason not to hire you. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't kid yourself though. I mean, networking has got to, networking is a major part of it. You got to be huge, a huge part of it. Um, but uh but it, but it you, i don't know you, i mean it's probably still like a lot of other industries too where yeah like who you know does matter like, that matters unfortunately that matters i don't even know to say unfortunately or not but it, that is a part of life i mean yeah you know um whether or not that's right or wrong um but <laughs> But I don't think that you're going to, there aren't many like successful illustrators that you could probably point out like to what you're saying, John, and just be like, yeah, terrible illustrator, just knew the right people. <laughs> you know, it's- there's, uh, no, there's no such thing. You know what it is? You know what it is? Because I would say uh, the who you know is there are some actors that I would be like, yeah, they knew the right people, <laughs> you know? Like, like that's a career that I, a, cre a career in the arts that like I can see kind of like thriving uh, without talent, you know? And well, Timmy, I'll, I'll give you, yeah. Well, you know this, but I'm going to tell the audience this is that who you know, I mean, art directors run our industry and, you know, getting on the radar, you know, the job of the emerging artist is to become memorable to the people that could potentially hire you. Your portfolio is your job interview. And if it's not good, there's no possibility. Um, yeah, we're not saying that all art directors are like. Art directors are good. There's like, great art directors out there, but they. Yeah, do, but I'm, they, I'm not they, saying we're not saying that they're like. Stuff. We're not saying that they're like equitable in all of their decisions and whatever. It's just. They're not just like you couldn't be a successful art director and only hire your friends or oh, no. Their their job is to move the products or to fulfill their clients' yeah. needs. And they're going to hire the best people in the industry because the budgets are good enough to hire good people in most cases and are artists that will work for those budgets. And they're going to hire the people that are going to give them the, mo the most opportunity for success. And so they hire, it, it makes it a very honest business in that way, anyway. I'm still, I'm trying to, I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I'm I'm trying to uh, uh, understand this question. Uh, how do your feelings differ from creating uh, performing arts or visual arts? John, do you do a lot of perform performing arts? <laughs> this is about as close to it as I've ever gotten. This is kind of performative. This, room. <laughs> this is pretty performative, actually. <laughs> Yeah, I would go ahead and say prefer visual arts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> hey. Which one? Maven. Change over there. Change over the pee. This is Maven. Oh, hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was that? <laughs> you look, is anybody? Are you excited for Christmas? Are you excited for Christmas? Or the holidays. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Do you have a tree set up? Yeah. Santa? Are you expecting Santa soon? Uh huh. Counting down the days. One. Well, you have one day of school left, and then you go on Christmas. One day of school break. left. That's what's important. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you how do you think your mom feels about that? <laughs> yeah, remember how I was saying I was like feel a little pressed because yeah. Because oh hey. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> okay, can you say Merry Christmas to everybody out there? Merry Christmas. Anyway, say Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, you girls go to bed, okay? Come on. Merry Christmas. Sorry, this one's very new. <laughs> Is that the, the other twin? Yeah, that's the other one. <laughs> I'm very confusing to, to tell who's who because we, because every time we say sister. Okay. Sister, stop arguing. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, come All right. on. Come on. I think that they like the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, that's why I hide in the guest room when I do uh, illustration isolation. Yeah, all right. Well, this is a great time to move on to the second pose. Uh, so next pose is going to be 20 minutes. Uh, we went really long in that first one. Uh, oh, nice one. job, Cassandra. That's really beautiful. Yeah. It was Please. a tough expression I was still trying to get. Please that's post your work. Please post your work to Instagram using hashtag illustration isolation um, and at negative collection. Please tag negative, negative collection. Uh, Matt Salacuse has been a huge supporter. Um, he's helping introduce us to new photographers. Um, and he's just a fun friend of the show. So please uh, give him that shout out. Um, oh, I listened to the Lindley Palette. Timmy, I really enjoyed it. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Tamar, if anybody's looking for a good a good podcast to listen to while they work, or honestly, because we did run that ad, anybody here, uh, a Lonely Palette listener? I'm kind of curious. Uh, but uh, yeah, she killed it with that episode. That was great. Yeah, um, it was interesting because I, I listened to that episode and then I hopped over to another podcast I listened to, Criminalia. And they wow. had an episode on um, Ghent's altarpiece. And so like in the crazy history of that one. So those paired together was a really fun combo. Can you sum summarize like Tamar's uh, take on the Caravaggio? Um, I just thought she did a really good job of kind of talking about the era it was in and how like how rogue Caravaggio was as an artist. like. Yeah, what did she call him? You you texted me about it or messaged me. It was the equivalent of just like basically calling him a freelancer. Yeah. You know, in the time when you have a basically a sponsor, whether it's the Medici, the Medici or something like that, or the, the church. Um, yeah. he, King or he country. Was, <laughs> uh, it was uh, King, country, or church was. Yeah, yeah. Was, exactly. He was basically for hire to whomever and was just like, oh, give me a job, I'll show up and I'll paint. So it was just an interesting discussion of like how he painted, like, um, and it was so tragic because he died so young and his like one light source 
kind of technique that in spite of the fact that he wasn't able to have an apprentice because he died so young, still people studied his work from afar. And then, you know, like she used Latour as an example of somebody that um, painted a lot of work the way he did because of the way that Caravaggio painted. I'm trying to remember because I've listened to like five of her episodes since that. <laughs> How young was he when he died? He was, is it 33? Was it 38? Oh man. He was in his 30s. This is, this is the piece that is discussed in the episode. Yeah, so that beautiful single light interior source is what she really discussed. And then just the expressions and how dramatic that he made his pieces, like and what a big deal it was at the time. And I, I found it so like a really great listen, especially when you're working, when you're painting, it's cool to hear them talk about his yeah. technique. And, you know, his backgrounds are pretty abstract and he really made the focus on just what is going on in the foreground, that action, that drama to really play out that moment. It's a, it's amazing to really think about the, the craft that was passed from person to person back then. Like, and like how like, you know, John, like, like your dad, like, you know, your dad had tricks that he did. Like he had things or processes that, a lot of them were documented, you know, and, mm -hmm. and now people use them uh, and they're kind of part of the canon, right? Uh, but like, you know, during that time, like if the person didn't share something, like it just got totally lost, right? Or do you, do you think that there are any like gaps in progress for painters or like in time, in his, historically? I don't know. I, That's I, a really good question. It's a good yeah. question. It's like somehow they, they, you know, I guess we can say it seems like they always find everybody, you find all the talent, but the, we don't know because there might be somebody missing <laughs> because maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will say, um, uh, you know, there were so many female artists of work of that, of this era that has been lost. And actually no. there were, there were actually several female artists, a lot of them, and only now is some of it that has been kept is starting to come out. So I think that there, there could be like a lot of voices where that were popular at the time that hasn't lasted through history. So I think there could be things like that. Right. I agree with you on that. There's definitely missing stuff, but I think, and, and, and it gets like it like resurfaces but it only can resurface if it like still exists you know right so like, like vivian how meyer much of that was held on to yeah vivian meyer is like the most obvious mm -hmm. you know reference point for that uh you know in a matter of like a couple of years she if you don't know the vivian meyer story is like crate of negatives purchased very really great you know story in reference to what we're doing tonight because Salacuse, um, he's buying these from flea markets. Uh, they're like, as he was mentioned, they're one stop away from the landfill. I mean, he's like, you know, this photo of MLK, like I was talking with Raymond about the MLK photo. Raymond's like, man, th these photos of MLK like are maybe some of the least seen photography of him. And it's, that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. As like a historical value. Uh, but I think about that, like with, with all of these like lost images and you think of like Vivian Meyer, those slides were purchased in a couple crates, I guess. Um, and she went from being a completely unknown, unknown person, let alone photographer to being maybe one of the most uh, like prolific, talented photographers of, you know, mm -hmm. 20th century. I mean, but definitely one of my favorite, you know, I'm not, um, but yeah, I, I just think, yeah. And like, you know, John, I've asked you like how many, you know, like how old does something have to be before it's just like inherently valuable, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a painting, like, like if, if I, you know, if I paint something, like if I, if you guys are all painting, right. If I go and I draw something, 
if it's just still around in like 800 years, like I bet it's valuable. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like, like not even 800, like 300, you know, you're like, whoa, still you're going for the long game. (laughs) No, it's true. It's true. But the truth is, is, the truth is, is no one's going to keep my drawing around for 300 years, but they they'll probably keep that like amazing mouse painted as a prince you know <laughs> right <laughs> right like that's gonna last way longer than my drawing of and then me. they're gonna then they're gonna come up with their own meaning behind what the painting really meant when it was just a matter of i was curious how to do his cravat you know like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's cassandra with your work they're gonna look at it and be like what time period was this from because they're not, <laughs> because all of the different time periods that you paint the the figures. And they're going to be like, oh, what is going on in her head? But, it, you know, you make, a, you make a valid point to me. There's so many um, paintings I'll come across in antique shops that are not very good, but because they're old, they, like, mark up the price. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I go, uh, I don't anymore, but I grew up Arrowhead, uh, Arrowhead hunting or Arrowhead, like, searching whatever you would call it collecting collecting um we would just like walk through a creek for like hours it was uh it was a dad hobby that was forced upon me (laughs) is this when you weren't looking for jesse james or anybody this is this is this is actually john i'm glad you said that this is very much tied into the jesse james grave experience (laughs) because we were we were looking for arrowheads when we came upon an unmarked grave. Uh, but uh, we would find arrowheads and uh, we actually, I'll, I'll actually find, I'll, I'm at my mom, so I'll go grab them and show you my arrowhead collection. <laughs> but uh, I found the, um, what I believe is probably the most valuable arrowhead in the collection. And it was an arrowhead made by a child for like a toy. Oh, that's cool. And it was so tiny. It, it's it's the tiniest thing. It's so tiny. Um, yeah. That's got really some, cool. Got some questions lining up, so I'm going to start reading them. What do, what do you recommend uh, in, a por- in an illustration portfolio, like a uh, number of pieces in a portfolio, John? Uh, well, I say you got to have... 8 to 12 to show originally, and then you got to have another few, another three or four as backup when they ask you to see more work. (laughs) So Mm. um, you got to have a couple in your pocket, in your back pocket. So 15 will get you there. Uh, I've I've heard of people using, doing a lot lower. I mean, uh, contemporary uh, uh, cover, book cover artist, Tommy Arnold, uh, showed one cover to Irene Callow, and she hired him. That must have been one heck of one. Well, he had other things that were close, but um, that that's, I don't suggest that to anybody. That's a very, you know. Special. Yeah, that's, a, that's an unusual thing. Somebody asked, do you paint nudes? Pardon me? Uh, somebody asked about, do, do you paint nudes? Uh, I've done lots of figurative work. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a big part. We just don't do that for uh, uh, the uh, drawing episodes just because people tune in from all over the world. So a lot of different cultures and ages and everything. So just right. try to keep it uh, universally friendly. So you can, uh, you know, log in from your library and you don't have to put blinders on your laptop. Um, Do you have any books uh, you recommend um, on building composition? Yeah, the um, the first one I would recommend, and it's not specifically for that, is the uh, 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 Cassandra helped me with it. It's um, um, Edgar Payne's. Oh, yeah. Of outdoor painting. Um, yeah. It's like the understanding of outdoor painting or, uh, but it's, it's 
tons of thumbnailing compositions and organizing certain types of uh, landscapes. Um, uh, it's a composition of outdoor painting. There we go. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was. I was just trying I to. Why I was struggling with that? I looked at it for stared at it forever. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that's very helpful. Um, I think it's really how composition is learned. In my mind, most of it is learned by looking um, and looking at people that do it well. Mm. Um, I think it's very important. You know, Chris Payne said something the other night. And somebody asked about how to draw a nose. And he goes, well, first thing I would do is look at people that draw noses really well. I loved that answer. <laughs> and, and I think that's how you think about composition. Um, I mean, there's some basic understanding of abstract design theory um, that maybe people ought to try to get a handle on. Um, but I, I, I think the most important thing to do is, is to just look and then... Um, you know, you know, design, you know, designing a picture isn't like, it's a journey you go on, you know, it's just a process of, you know, doing, doing thumbnails, doing value studies, creating, you know, abstract design principles on a page, uh, creating light and dark pattern, um, learning how to do that, uh, that process is probably the most helpful thing of learning the power of the three value thumbnail and uh, how to how to pursue with a light and dark pattern and value structure. Um, and th the best exercise I could give anybody is find some people that do it well. So somebody like uh, Dean Cornwell or Gary Kelly or mm -hmm. Ernie Fuchs or my father or um, artists that are really good composers and designers uh, with their work and do thumbnails of their work practice the, you know don't get into like master copies i mean there's a time and place for that too but just get into the get into the practice of figuring out what makes these pictures work so well what what is the what is the overall composition of these pictures that that these artists put together and you can see that in a three value thumbnail easily and then it will start to give you an idea of what your thumbnail should look like. And that's that's what Edgar Payne was doing in that in that book. I've seen yeah, there's lots of I've seen lots of things on composition, and then I kind of leave it kind of going yeah okay. Um, I don't get too excited about the outcome of them. I love the thumbnailing of good works. Like that, that is so dot on. And like, what was the puzzle pieces that made that work? Yeah, seeing the structure of why why a piece works really well. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is as far as the best printed thing I've ever seen on composition is a compositional um, part of. Um, the famous artist course and they do some compositional things in there that are very helpful john that's amazing yeah it looks good you got that hair shape perfectly all right here it is since i'm here we're gonna do a little show and tell segment for me yay this is the glare is terrible but that's me in a creek <laughs> 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 Look pretty miserable. That was like peak uh, bowl cut. Yes, baggy yeah. shirt. Yeah, that was like peak nineties too. Oh yeah, this is just one of the trays. I can't tilt it or they'll fall. That's so neat. But uh, but yeah, there's found tons of them. Just I bet we have like a little over a hundred of them. But this is the one. Oh my gosh, it is so tiny. <laughs> I thought when you said small, it was going to be like a little bigger than that. No, no, it looks like it looks like it could just be coincidental. 
like yeah. a flip where you're like, wow, that looks. I'm impressed you found that. Uh, that that's why it's like the most prized one because it was like the best find. Like, it, like I mean, like if you find one that's like you know, I'm gonna see if I can find like the largest one. I mean, this is a lo- large one. This is like sure. super easy. Like not impressive at all. Like anybody, <laughs> anybody could have found that. I've never found one, so I'm impressed. Uh, one time, the best, this was the cruelest joke my mom ever played on my dad. Um, she, uh, we were at the Mark Twain uh, Museum in uh, Hannibal, Missouri, and they had a gift shop. And the gift shop was just full of just like dumb trinkets that they wanted to sell. And uh, it was an arrowhead that was like a BC arrowhead. Like it was not an arrowhead you would find in Missouri. It was like something that you would just never, it was like, it was absurd. It was huge and it was just beautiful and <laughs> and ridiculous. And it was like, we had all these arrowhead books. It was one of the the arrowheads you would find that like in the book that would say like, you know, estimated 4,000 years old. Like it was one of those, right? Wow. Like they, they would kill like woolly mammoth with, and it was like, a, like, it was like that type of stuff, you know? And, uh-huh. uh, and it, this was just like a, you know, they were just selling like a fake like mold of it. And my mom bought it and we went, we were arrowhead hunting and she <laughs> just like, like laid it in the sandbar and my dad just kept walking right by it, <laughs> right? And finally he found it. And it was like, we all of we all underestimated like how upsetting and disappointing it will be <laughs> to reveal that this was like definitely not a real era. <laughs> so did you all know except for your dad? Yeah, my dad was the only guy that didn't know. And <laughs> and we didn't tell him at all. Like it, we like let it go on. Like it kept building, right? And we get back to, you know, like our little camp and like we're, we're <laughs> he's he's got the Arrowhead books out and he's oh like gosh. looking through them and like trying to, and he's like, I think it might be of this era, you know? And like doing all, this is before the internet, everybody. And like, he's trying to find it. And then my mom had another Arrowhead book and she traced it in advance. She traced her, the arrowhead she got on a, the last page of the book <laughs> and and it said you know like 1998 Hannibal Missouri gift shop <laughs> <laughs> right? and it was like I think it was like oh this is funny and then it was like that was, it, it was like it broke him <laughs> I think it was too much <laughs> but your dad was a pranker like yeah but it was a joke that went it went too far it was too far <laughs> I mean, now it's it's like my favorite practical joke he's ever done. I think it's like brilliant, but yeah. Uh, um, here's a good question. Do you, do you all have like a particular style of illustration that you've really been drawn to lately? I don't know. I'm a real bad, I don't like, style like using calling something style <laughs> all that much um what would be the better like, what would be a better there's, way there's individuals that have you know like personal voice or um i think works better than style um you know it's maybe, like maybe i should ask just to change the question opposed to because you get like do you have any new illustrators that you've been drawn to lately um Oh man, I mean, I some illustrator, some painter. I I I love looking at uh, Nicholas Uribe right now. Um, I look, I like looking at. Um, uh, he's in here sometimes. Um, uh, Schweitzer. Uh, what, oh, Nate. Nate. Nate Schweitzer's work. Randy's I was, son. I, I I was looking at a piece of his yesterday it just blew me away oh he's he's doing such great work um it was his uh uh it's right at the top of our page um, but i follow him and look at all of his work 
of um, Dracula. Excellent artist. Uh, one of my favorite, I mean, been around for a little while now is, is, uh, is uh, Vic Nye. I think Vic is phenomenal. I think uh, Catherine Lamb is phenomenal. I like a lot of my past, you know, past students, uh, Edward Kinsella and, and uh, uh, I love Audrey's work. I love looking mm -hmm. at uh, anything Sterling does blows my mind. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, just unbelievable talent. This is about all I'm capable of tonight. <laughs> so what, what did you paint today, Cassandra? Um, so I restored um, three more little rosettes. Like, I don't know if you remember those little like 150 year old corner pieces that I restored last year for a show. Was it last year or the year before? Last year. Cool. Um, so I restored three more for a show coming up and I painted a cockatoo as an Earl and he's only like, I think it's maybe a three inch circumference. So it was working super tiny today. I think it's smaller than three inches. Uh, maybe, uh, how, about, how about you, Cassandra? I, I kind of jumped in and started talking about people I, I look at that I like a lot right now. Um, yeah, no, actually, I'm, like, I fully, uh, like, all that you were mentioning were people that I've been looking at and really appreciate. And I've just been, um, yeah, I, I, my brain is not coming up with fresh names, but I follow so many and I'm, I'm really excited about all the work I've been seeing lately. One second. I'll, uh, pull this out real quick. It's one of my favorite books and I, I have, I, I spent probably an hour looking at it last night. It's called Famous American Illustrators. Right there, it's got a dust jacket on it, so you can't see it. There we go. Ooh. And it has got some of the greatest illustrators of all times in here. And I was looking through it last night and again this morning and just amazed at how great they are. And mm. It's an important thing to do. I mean, uh, you know, I I mostly look at painters, um, but there's a great, you know, a spread of Bernie Fuchs's work. Yeah. In, and he, there's only like five or six artists that have two full pages, maybe 10. Artists How old is that book, man? Look at that. How old is that uh... book? I don't know, maybe 15 years. Who, who wrote Famous American Illustrators? R.P. Amorin. R.P. used to be the uh, president of the Society of Illustrators years ago. I knew her as a child, actually. Uh, but it's got, you know, it's got all the, you know, got, there's Frank Schoonover. This one of my, Schoonover, one of my favorite illustrators. Oh, I love his shape, yes. And then I think somewhere in here, I got... Someone who's kind of close to me. He's one of those 10 that has four full pages. There's a kind of a. Oh, I've page. heard of that guy before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> here's one of his pages or two of his pages. And then there's another one here. This. We're joking about John's dad here. These are, this yeah. is his work for anybody who's new. Guy was pretty good. He knew it's, stuff. It's got it's got all the big big guns in it up until about 20 years ago. Um, but you know, my library is really important to me. I look at I pull books off and look at things that I haven't looked at in a while. <laughs> the reason I picked that book up is I saw four books exactly alike, and I didn't I have four copies of it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's that good. Yeah, well, I don't know why I have four copies somehow. I think my dad had a few and they ended up from his library to mine. Oh, that makes sense.
How old do you think James Brown is in this photo? Thirty-ish, thirty-five-ish. Was he? Did was James Brown like a like was he successful like right like immediately in life? I'm gonna just I, Google. It. Sorry, I I have no idea. I know he was the hardest working man in showbiz. That's what he always said. <laughs> yeah, his uh, his first hit was "Please, Please, Please." 1956. Wow. I worked with a guy at Trader Joe's named Willie, and he got to drum with, with James Brown. And it was just like the moment of his life. He just said it was so cool. He was such a nice guy. OK, so he was 23 when his first hit came out. Wow. I don't know if there's a date on this photograph or not. I, I'll look it up because it, I like to know that stuff. It's fun. Man, we could we could do the negative collection like four times every year. I know there were so many pictures. It's just I love the one of the old lady. I think it's in Poland and she's like shopping in a market. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought that one was a cool one. There were so many like interesting just scenes. Oh, I'll show you this one. This one's crazy. This is. Oh, wild. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 1890s. <laughs> what about the creepy clown in the police car? Oh, gosh. I'll see if I can find it. That guy belonged in a police car. <laughs> is it just on the main products page? It's so yeah, there oh, it is. One? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's like early like Joker type stuff. Yeah, right? like I oh, it just man. It's I love like it's a great composition and like you get this kid going to a baseball game. It is just such I have so many questions from this photo. So many questions. <laughs> yeah, you'll never know. That's funny. It's amazing. This is the. Yeah. Um, when when you were yes. saying Martin Luther King for, for today, I thought that was going to be the one that was used. Yeah, I'm assuming that this one's not as good for drawing. I, this is my favorite photo. This is one of my favorite photos from the whole. It's a, it would be if I could see it. <laughs> it's right. Just, yeah. Um, no, I just wasn't even thinking of the one we're working on today. Like this one is is better for being able to draw his face or paint his face, draw his face, whatever. But the framing right here is just incredible. You just feel like you're at dinner with him. I'm, I just think that is such a fascinating picture. So like, I just wonder, cause I know, I know that these are purchased and I'm gonna have to message him about this if he doesn't join us tonight. I know that he, he was explaining, like he goes to these flea markets he, he just like goes through as many slides as he, or as many negatives as he can. And if he sees one good negative, just one at all, he buys the whole bunch. He buys all of it. And then he takes them home and, and then goes through them. Right. And he said, you know, if you find one photo like this, let's see who we got here. Oh, got Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. But he's like, yeah, you get one photo like this. If you get one photo like this, you, I mean, it's pretty, it's more rare that like somebody just accidentally takes a photo this great. Right. right? He goes, but every once in a while I get burned. And you're just like, wow, I found like the photo of that person's life. <laughs> and like the rest of the photos are just photos of their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wow, I got a lot of catching up to do. Somebody asked, Cassandra, are you painting oil on cardboard? It's acrylic, right? Yeah, it's acrylic. But I seal the cardboard first with GAC 100 so that I don't have to fight the cardboard absor absorbing the paint. 
For anybody wondering, uh, somebody just asked where those photos are. It's the negative collection. Uh, uh, it's the ne negativecollection.com. Um, no the in it, just negativecollection.com. And a uh, big part of this project, Matthew sells prints of these slides. So um, yeah, they're amazing. I've got a couple prints. Uh, uh, we've got a few lined up as well. Also, so, they have an Instagram page, and there's a lot, a lot more there than the website too. Right, I love the Instagram page. Yeah, because what's what's wild? This is what blows my mind. Is like if like it feels like whenever any like celebrity passes away or something wild happens, like somehow he has a photo of that one. <laughs> you're like, yeah. what? You know, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just so impressive, like what he has found. Yeah, I, yeah, I, somebody said those paintings, drawings, they're looking great. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I, it's, he's very persistent for sure. But uh, yeah, if anybody's considering the, uh, getting a print, um, they're awesome. Um, on that note, let's move on to our last pose. Um, please post your work, hashtag illustration isolation and at negative collection and at visualized passage. We're going to check them out at the end of the night. It's one of my favorite parts of the night. So please post your work. Do it now. Bill, how have you been doing? Timmy, Timmy, oh, I'm sorry. Timmy, you need to come up with the Schwarzenegger uh, do it now for uh, oh, as, that's a good one. as a sound. Bite. Oh, that is a good one. Is that kindergarten cop? Do it now. <laughs> I feel like that's more Terminator. Yeah. Really? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I. You know what's funny is I. <laughs> the only Schwarzenegger one on my soundboard is. Uh, um, it's not a Tuma. <laughs> yeah. Now that is Kindergarten <laughs> Cop for sure. Well, I got a. Let's see. I got a lovely Christmas holiday card here in the mail today. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my lord, look at that. That's cool. <laughs> love it. Oh, uh, look at those girls. They're adorable. Thank Me. Let's you. See the, let's see the artwork. It was the first time I did like a holiday themed That's painting. Fantastic. So I made it my card this year. That's wonderful. The girls, awesome. I will um, read that in a little bit. There. So my, my grandma was a big card sender. Like if she met you and knew you for five minutes, by the time she'd walk away, she'd have your address and you would get a birthday card on your birthday. Like oh she God. would send out, it just seems like hundreds of them. And she always like managed to get on time. So it, it just feels wrong if I don't get cards to people. Cause it's, it's just, it is the way in our family. And last year I didn't do cards and it was like this year I'm determined to get cards out. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's always fun getting to hang with y'all. I'm, I need to be better at that. I'm not a very good card sender. Cassandra, I was going to send Christmas cards this year or holiday cards this mm -hmm. year. It's going to be me and Gianna's first time doing it. And oh. I had this idea. I did not, I ran out of time. I got busy and I'm staying with my mom. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to execute this concept, but I wanted to um, do a photo shoot with a couple that look kind of like me and Gianna <laughs> <laughs> with dogs that look like our dogs, kind of, but just like swap everything out enough to really confuse people. <laughs> I just thought that you should make your Halloween costume picture your card. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. I just was like, I just was like, how trippy would it be if you got a Christmas card from me and Gianna and you're just like, wait, that's not them. But, but it looks like two people trying to be like them. That's funny. That's a lot of work. 
yeah. to like get it yeah. close but it, it did just have people be like you guys look great great oh no you're for sure gonna be able to tell it's not us okay so it's definitely <laughs> yeah there's i don't think that i have the budget to uh like do like full-blown casting you know <laughs> and that's what it would take you know this is mm -hmm. more of like a I did, I did imagine like doing a, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna have to get on like Facebook marketplace and do like a, a casting for our Christmas card. You could always do, go to Sears and do the super awkward poses. That would actually be the best way to probably do it, but bring the people that I've hired to be us. Mm -hmm. Bring them to Sears. Yeah, totally. Those nice pattern backdrops with a like a carpeted box to Sweaters. put your elbow on. Yes, sweater vests. <laughs> yes. Someone asked, is it essential to go into galleries to feel art or is it more interesting to view photos from Instagram? Um, I, I prefer, if possible, to see it in person because there's so much that you can't always see over the internet. But if you can't make it in, you know, there's people are getting better and better at taking pictures and finding ways to kind of make you feel like you, you're seeing it the best way possible. I, I think of it this way. You can look at a painting that's maybe six feet by five feet in person is, is a... It, it can be an engulfing experience, right? That's different than looking at something the size of a postage stamp or a business card, right? Uh, That's one of the things I, I used to love about going to the Society of Illustrators shows is that it used to be all originals and now it's mostly digital prints. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's a big difference. Um, yeah. I will say like Raymond showed me some like VR galleries that I've used with the VR headset and I'm not saying that it replaces it but it is pretty amazing how far it takes you from the current limitations of technology like it yeah. there is something really amazing about it especially like like Cassandra like you said like it's like all about like if you have the means like if, like if you live in DC like you should go to the museum but like right you're in a situation where you don't have access to museums or you can't go to museums for some reason. Um, like, I think it's pretty cool. Like I saw it, like Raymond told me about it and I tried it out. And uh, I think we both were kind of skeptical about just like, okay, like I've seen like, a, you know, like, I don't know. I played enough video games. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. And I was like, this is nuts. So. Well, and um, you, the, my last big solo show we had to go online because you know COVID kind of ramped back up again and we wanted to be safe so my my husband works for like a, a company that sells 3D software programming and like scanners and printers um but like he was able to get his coworker to 3D scan some of my paintings so that people could look at online with VR goggles or turn it around because I was restoring antique items and that just wasn't translating online. So it was kind of a fun way to kind of dip my toe into how can you find other ways for people to experience your art if they can't see it in person. That's cool. That's amazing. My, I, my son sent me a picture yesterday. He's in New York and uh, he's, he was at the Museum of Modern Art. And he's standing in front of Starry Night. And, uh, um, you know, just for him to be able to go and see original paintings and mm. th there's a history to them, I think, uh, the tangibility. Um, yeah, definitely. But I even feel that way about art books. Like I have a, if I've seen a painting in real life, it's really hard for me to I see it in an art book and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, it's just it's just not the same, you know. And... But I've spent a fortune on art books <laughs> because yeah. 
I wanted to take them home. Mm-hmm. I know. But I'm less likely to buy art books these days because of that. Yeah. The last, the last art books I bought, Bill, were from the New Museum. I was, uh, I went was, I was at the Society of Illustrators show in 2020, right before COVID started, and um, uh, I went with Sterling, and they were closing or they were remodeling the bookstore and they were getting rid of all these books. So I bought like 10 books <laughs> that were not, they, they weren't very big, um, uh, but they were on, you know, Klimt and Chile. Yeah. And, um, and I only spent, I, I literally, I bought 10 books and I spent $40. They oh were just, get, they were just getting rid of them. I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't, there's just no way. I thought about getting a suitcase and, Oh my God, yeah. I just had a picture of you trying to lug down, lug home like 10 books. Well, they weren't very big. Um, and probably reason, reason they were not that expensive either, but um, they're really nice. Hmm. Yeah, there is a bookstore in England near the Tate that um, um, I went to years and years ago and it just so many books I had not seen so many photographers I hadn't seen I went a little overboard okay you know I just um because you know if you don't buy it you're it's gonna haunt you um, at least that's what I tell myself when I buy that book but uh, I saw Anita, one of Anita Kunz's recent books uh, in a bookstore, and I just, I didn't buy it at the time, but I did kind of make a mental note, like, to put that on my Christmas list or birthday list, you know. Oh, yeah, that one looks good. Is that the one of, like, the female portraits? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, good. not that one. This is the one of um, her version of historical paintings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's rewritten... Um, she's rewritten art history to um, from she's changed all the pronouns mm -hmm. from male to female. Um, if you don't know the name Anita Kuntz, K U N Z, one yeah. of the great working illustrators for the last quarter century. Yeah. Really great, really great. Or longer than that. Yeah, but at some point I'll treat, I'll go back and I'll treat myself to it. <laughs> yeah, I felt lucky um, she was there for Illustration Academy, so it was great to watch her work and hear her talk. That felt the same way. <laughs> How do you think people across the board, John, I'm sure you probably hear from like uh, Catherine and uh, Audrey about this, like how do they contact ADs mostly now? Oh, well, there's, you gotta do it multiple prong. <laughs> yeah. um, there's probably no, there's probably no uh, silver bullet. No, there's not a silver bullet, but there's effective ways. Yeah. You know, I think that just yeah. like in anything right now, I think newsletters become very important for illustrators. Yeah. Uh, um, obviously, aligning your social media, you know, using that properly. I don't think so, social media is an answer to anything except makes a nice, nice online portfolio. Um, I'll say this because we used to send out a lot of print material to promote what we do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I, and I'm, I'm mindful of this, you know, like there was always part of me that was like, Ugh. you know, we're creating a lot of stuff, especially like promotional print material that, um, you know, only so much of it is going to go up on a wall and be appreciated. A lot of it 
is going to end up in a landfill. This is the un unfortunate nature of like promotional material, you know? And uh, I think I heard from a couple people being like, hey, they would call and they're very, very polite about it. They were like, hey, please don't send me uh, printed material. I love to see your stuff, but can you send me just send me the updates? Like, can you email them to me or email me the, the, the poster? And it was just exclusively like, I just don't want to like the wasted paper and the shipping and all of that, you know? Um, right. So it's like one of those things where it's like, uh, Dan, if you, if you don't, because I know a lot of art directors love the postcards. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been in the office of several, uh, well, a lot of the most notable art directors. And, uh, and then some I haven't been in, I've seen photos of their offices. And uh, <laughs> they have mailers pinned up all over the place. Um, things that they've collected that people sent to them. Art directors, you know, are real appreciators of art, yeah. of illustration, and uh, they hang on to it. And so I, I think it's a, it's, you've got to approach from all directions. There's some art directors. Uh, I've only had one say, in a in a um, lecture that we were doing, that they didn't really like getting direct mail. Uh, almost all everyone else said that they I've really heard it from so many art artists. I, I I know it's not the same, but yeah, uh, I think it's also a new a generational thing too. Yeah, well, yeah, you but know, I mean, you're you're not wrong. I mean, you're totally right. Well, some of the most notable artists in the industry have, have said it to our students. It's like, yeah, they still like getting direct mail. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I'll say, and this is like, I come from a, a lineage of printers, whatever you think you need to print for your promotional project, like print 25% of it. <laughs> like, I don't think I, people always overprint what they need. Um, and they have business cards for like eight years, you know, um, and, you know, if your business card, if you don't think you're going to change your business card or anything, you know, like, then that's fine. You got them stocked up, but man, I don't know, like business cards, promotional stuff. Like, I, I don't know. It just ends up usually like sitting in a closet. That's been my promo experience. When I look at printing, but I think well, too, that, you know, there's resource books that should can you can look at to see really beautiful print campaigns. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at those and getting ideas for something unusual that you know put a little extra thought into it. I don't know. Yeah, John, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Sorry. Well, I think that, uh, you know, you got to, most important thing is who you're sending them to. Yes. You know, know your audience, establish your audience, um, learn who's, who's doing what and buying what. And, you know, that's a big yeah. part of uh, understanding how to work in the industry is, uh, who, who is who are the art directors that do what you want to do and only show them <laughs> things that are pertinent to what they're looking for um, I think it's real important to not confuse an art director you know the, the really the ultimate goal of the emerging illustrator is to become memorable to the art directors that they want to work for and you got to show the function that they're looking for with an aesthetic, something that links all of your work together, your voice. You know, it's a, there's no secret that, you know, the how important voice is for an illustrator, or how important identity is. It's like when you see a Sterling Hunley, you don't need to see a, um, a credit. If you know Sterling's work, his work embodies right anything he does 
and that's memorable. And that's really, really valuable uh, in getting an art director to remember what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going to print something, just make sure it's good, like really good. Because then yeah. people want to pin it up. Like when I've gotten good cards from people or, or mailers, like I'll, I'll pin them up if they're, if they're awesome. Everybody, we're going to be, this is the uh, five minute warning on this last page, so. I meant to move on to paint the lady in the hat, but. <laughs> you didn't though. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept. Yeah. I'm, still drawing, I'm still drawing James. I can't stop drawing him. I can have an appointment. Oh my God. That's what I started with. <laughs> I also think about like, uh, of all the like fun people that I've met or like reached out to and something, uh, materialized from it it is so rare it happened immediately it so often was like a culmination of like like a really long relationship where i just reached out and was like um sometimes i think the best thing to do is to just reach out and be like hey i love what you're doing like as a fan kind of like mm. uh, not say, I'm not saying that this is what you should do with an art director. I'm just saying like, whenever I've like had somebody in mind that I wanted to work with or that I really admired or build a relationship with, I'm like, I love what you're doing. And I have like a very brief rapport with them. And then it's like less awkward when like something ca can happen. I mean, this is a perfect example of it. I didn't just like, cold call for the negative collection and like do like a you know a hundred word pitch on it you know for drawing night it's like just really liked what salicuse does i really admire him as a photographer and honestly just like as a person who's created a really interesting life for himself and you like kind of build a report and then it's like six months later they're like they I, either they reach out to you or you write, reach out to them. You're like, hey, by the way, I was thinking, da, da, da. Um, I don't know. Well, I think it's so interesting. Sorry, John, go ahead. No, I think you're, I think you're right, but I I think you know back to what we were talking about. You know, reaching out to art directors, it's like it's a cumulative. You know, it's it's a combination of sending things to them. Uh, you know, entering the right shows, the things that they look at. Um, you got to really understand the industry well and uh, approach all facets of it. Um, you know, I always try to remind people, you know, you're as a, as a freelance artist, you're, you're kind of running your own business and you got to address every aspect of it. And if marketing, marketing is, is definitely a part of it. And uh, yeah, getting yourself out there is huge. Yeah. You got to get ready to fail like rapidly yeah uh, the best it's the best thing to do it's better it's better to get a quick no than a maybe um that was one of the first things i learned when i started like going into business like starting a business and working for myself was just like oh wow yeah the no stings it stings a little bit um and it's not what you wanted to hear but uh the maybe is like a kiss of death. I mean, it just, it usually drags out. I would say like a maybe is like 85% is of the time is a no. It's not always a no, but most of the time it results in a no. Um, and what it does is it just wastes your time. Hmm. Um, yeah. Well, and I, I mean, in, terms of galleries I've had a couple galleries where I've approached them and they said no and I wasn't offended and then I approached them again and then they said yes like it's just right. sometimes a no is just not right now yeah and oh and I'll say this if they had said maybe or something like that then approaching them again is kind of awkward <laughs> hey and that maybe that you uh... <laughs> Hey, how about that? Maybe. Whereas if they said no, you like if they say no, like it's not awkward for like six months later to be like, hey, 
maybe you could uh, reconsider with this work or this, you know, I don't that, know, circumstances have changed, yeah, that, right? That, that, that you bring up a really important topic there, Timmy. It's like, you know, first thing, Cassandra said this earlier, is first thing you got, you got to get good. And yeah. when should you start showing stuff to, to art directors? And and I, I, I tell students a lot. It's like, you know, you better be ready because it's going to be really hard if you get rejected to go back and try to prove to these people a year later that you're better. Yeah, first impressions are killer. I mean, and, and they're busy and you got to really you got to really think about that, you know, um, yeah. You know, there's 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 some art directors out there that are really wise. You know, they have illustrators chasing them for long periods of time, and they you know they they're like, okay, this person's young. There, I really like where they're started here. Let's see what happens, and they'll you know they'll they'll talk to you, and they'll yeah. help you. Um, but um, man, you, you you go to talk to like, you know, top top people at top magazines or publishers and uh, yeah. getting in there the second time it's a bitch man i mean it's it, it, uh, it could be difficult sorry about yeah, that it's like it's kind of a double-edged sword because i wouldn't say because i know it's like it depends on like your personality or your character what what, what side of that is going to be a problem for you so like some people have you know might be a little too confident or they might think that just knowing the art director or connecting with the art director is going to solve their problem. Whereas then there are other people that are going to like lack the confidence to just be like, no, you're ready. You know, um, I, I'm assuming you probably see both types of students. I, I would guess the most common, the most common problem, like probably with young artists is, they think they're ready probably before they are big that's time probably, that's probably the, the most, most biggest the biggest problem with young artists is they're showing yeah non-functional work they're showing like assignments they did in school and um, yeah. work that doesn't relate to what the art director is looking for no but i just meant like timing timing it because like you're gonna biff it with like an interview like that's just life and and the i, I mean I like know. biff from back to the future I just mean like screw it up. Okay. Never right. heard Biff it before. So I was just immediately yeah. thought of back to the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not as far as I know a back to the future reference, but I don't know. Been around Sorry, I didn't mean to like this is really important, Cassandra, that you stopped it right there. Uh, this is really this is critical. I'm just seeking clarity. <laughs> uh, no, it's just like I, I don't know. I was just I, I don't know. People are complicated. Everybody's going to have a different thing. I would guess that most students lean towards that wanting, you know, a, wanting to be a couple steps ahead of where they are, you know? I mean, everybody wants to be a couple steps yeah. ahead of there. You know, that's natural. But, but, then, but then there are some people who are very talented that maybe need to have more confidence in where they're at, Ocean. <laughs> 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 but it's like, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that you know there's people are different and complicated but i don't know this is coming from a person that i have i have uh i have had some bad interviews before <laughs> so it's it's just a part of life well i think like what was you it? know the thing that you're all talking about is get to know where you want to be like if you know specifically what art director or if yeah. what area you want to be like really see what's going on. You guys say this all the time, like just be aware of like, who's the hottest illustrator or the painter, painter in the area that you're looking, like all of that stuff is, is gonna be the stuff that sets you up because then you know what work to direct towards them. Not necessarily like copying what's being done, but you can see where, where things are trending. Like well, what topics is, are people looking at? Yeah, Cassandra, the, um, the way I always, suggest that to people is like think of you know the portfolio again it is your job interview anybody that's been on a job interview or a successful job interview i would hope the first thing they did was research the company 
that they're going to interview for so they could know how they could be a benefit to that company. I see illustrators constantly not thinking about that. They, they don't look at it that way. They show what they want to do. They, sh they don't show, you know, they show somebody that's doing fantasy cover work, children's book work, you know, they show them the wrong thing. And you got to do your homework. You got to, you got to build that audience. It's very, very important. And that <laughs> understanding of, of who the audience is. Um. My really good friend, just on the topic of job interviews and like just totally eating it. My really good friend in Portland, uh, he had a, an interview at Leica, the animation studio out there. Yeah. And they um, they asked him, which is kind of weird. I think it's kind of a weird question to ask in, an in a job interview. He's interviewing for one position there. But then they asked him like, in like three or four years, what role, like what, what title or role do, would you hope to have? have at our company and john he did like no research at this on like uh, at all like a major company, by the way like <laughs> massive company he did no research on the person interviewing him and he said he said the title of the person interviewing him oh right. dear <laughs> so it was like get the f out of here like <laughs> like like that guy was like yeah no you are not working here <laughs> I don't need I don't need a young person gunning for my job. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Well, what you know, something I heard from a gallery I work with, it one of their pet peeves were just people who didn't research them before they approached them to look at their portfolio. And it was just really simple. They're like, you know, they wrote us and they didn't even know our names. Like mm -hmm. they didn't take the time to learn about us before saying, Hey, you should show my work. And it was such a good point because they're like, you want us to look into you and get to know you to see if you'll be a fit for us, but you didn't even see if we were a fit for you. Like if you don't want to do homework on us, it doesn't make us want to do the homework on you. That's a really good point. Everybody, um, this is the end of our final pose. So please post your work to Instagram uh, using hashtag illustration isolation and at visual arts passage, as well as at negative collection please if you tag anybody please tag at negative collection um they really deserve it so please post it now the panel's gonna keep talking and drawing uh for the last uh couple minutes as we wait for y'all to post um if, you, if you're still drawing right now you're, you're gonna get left behind so um you gotta post it now Somebody asked, has VAP ever held courses for art directing? We don't have an art direction program, but John, maybe you can kind of say like how that is part of the, the, uh, yeah, um, the, it's, the changed, experience. So it's changed over time. A lot of, a lot of art directors uh, in, um, from the traditional illustration side, publishing and editorial, um, they studied illustration um, and or graphic design and and, and again, they do something, you know, I, I would suggest having really good design skills, uh, be able to, you know, be able to lay out and, and use the tools that current tools that uh, designers are using, because that's going to be part of your job. And then know the industry really, really well. Uh, but we do not have a track for art direction. I saw in Studio Bridge too, you had um, a couple art directors talk and that was awesome. Yeah, we had quite a few actually. And then we just had um, um, uh, Lindsay Delant in uh, art director for the, in the games industry it was fantastic. currently working at absurd cool well i mean i i watched a couple of them i'm, I'm behind on so much of it right now well but, I mean, um, we, had, we had eric skillman and sujin basili and uh lauren panapento i mean those are like iconic names yeah i mean those are the ones i watched and like i adjusted my website after watching those talks i was like ooh, that was a really good point <laughs> <laughs> yeah
do you guys have any recs for the weekend? Because we're we're going on our holiday break, everybody. So uh, any good recs for the holiday? Movies, books. Well, there was that podcast, uh, Criminalia, doing like well, doing the the pairing of the Lonely Palette on Carvaggio, and then going over to Criminalia. It's episode eight of the newest season. That is just oh, the, I like this. This is like a pairing, like with your yes, yeah. yes. I, I really do think they belong together because then it's discussing. Um, the Ghent altarpiece uh, done by uh, Jean, uh, Jean Van Eyck. And it, it was all about like how many times it got stolen and like brought back and like through like 500 years, it was really, is like a really great one too. That'd be my recommendation. I got excited. Nice drawing, Bill. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, really good. It's fun to draw. Man, yours is. Your guys are all looking beautiful. Look at that, Cassandra. That's beautiful. I, yeah, I just couldn't stop painting them until it started to actually look like them. For the longest time, it did not look like them, and it made me crazy. Still not quite right. I I I got my share in a drawing and painting today. <laughs> yes, you did. 10 hours, that's enough. Yes, you've done good. Well, I have a recommendation because me and my uh, my mom on her hip surgery recovery have been binging the show Slow Horses, which is incredible. It's on Apple TV. It's Gary Oldman. Oh, I love Gary Oldman. I don't even, I've never even heard of this. What's it about? It's amazing. It's a British spy, like espionage. And it's, it is so good. I, I can't imagine Gary Oldman doing anything bad. So oh, he plays he plays such a bag really on the show. I mean, oh, he does it so well. It's so good. Love him. Oh, okay. I need to check that out. Yeah. I've been enjoying Wednesday. That's been really fun. Is it? Finished, I haven't finished it yet, but yeah, I think it's really fun to watch. Oh yeah, and Xander brings up the Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I haven't watched that yet, but I really, really want to. Yeah, is it is the Pinocchio a uh, live action? Stop motion. It's oh. I've watched clips. It is a work of art. Really? Truly, yeah. He, wow. I heard him talk about it, and he was mentioning about. Um, working so hard to do little things that you always see in movies, like if an actor kicks a bottle that just happens to be in the scene accidentally, trying to make those little accidents like appear so it looks more natural. Yeah, you know, um, that's really interesting because I heard, uh, what's his name? Um, the director for like Iron Man and he, John something. He's like the somebody can do this in the chat. Like, come on, help me out. Um, <laughs> I, he's like the big director uh, for oh, all John the, Favau. Yeah, um, he was talking about doing the, uh, you know, the live action Lion King, um, or the way they shot animation for those series and the way that they're doing animation now, um, where it's like kind of a blend of live action um and uh post-production all happening at once and you know there's like i'm not saying that the new lion king was good i think a lot of people did not like it but one of the things he talked about was he was like it allows accidents to happen that can be mm -hmm. that really don't exist in like animation or stop motion now because like you can't you can't do accident like if, if, if an accident is occurring in a stop motion film, like that's a disaster, <laughs> right? Uh, there's just so much planning. Um, I'm pulling up the stuff right now, everybody. Are you using your mom's phone tonight or? No, you know what? Uh, it, it's IP related. So desktop is working at my mom's house. Yay. Yep. It's funny how those people do that oh cool pele got drawn a couple of times you guys been watching the world oh. world cup much um, sure no. off and on. yeah my my wife gianna works at a french immersion school and so the entire school watched the world cup 
Oh, that's awesome. And she said she couldn't hear herself think. It was like, she said it was insane. <laughs> <laughs> little, little little French kids. Were they screaming. pulling for France? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We were not. Me and my mom were not pulling for France, but okay. Wow, it's amazing. Very fun. Yeah, I think it's time to go. Y'all have had a lot of time. This is Ooh, great. really great. Really great. I love how you handled the hair too. You've got so much good texture to it and this expression. Hang. Ooh, that's nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's great. Great that's movement. Nice. Really nice movement. Photo, for a photo that, like John, you're saying, like that's not like the easiest photo to draw. I, could, I couldn't have begun to draw that. I couldn't see it. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. John, really give you a magnifying glass. <laughs> nice. nice. Good ink washes. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Great job. <laughs> Sweet. Love it. Really good patterning. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to, I meant to paint her. That's great. Great job. So that, that photo of the, the, the person with the hat. That's a nice, pa that's a nice painting. Yeah. It really is. Good job, Charlotte. I guess that was a drag show, like in the, I think it said 80s. I, I I don't remember if I wrote that on the title for it. That was, was part of the title, yeah. Yeah, um, but I was wondering, like, if I, there's got to be a higher concentration of this stuff in the New York area. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Good. Nice. Ooh. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. Very delicate. Cool job oh nice. really nice that's amazing really well, nice oh, oh that's, that's nice. great great shapes i love how you handled that shadow <laughs> that's good mm -hmm. oh, oops it's hiding the there we go oh Ooh. wow very nice that's cool <laughs> cool yes good job Nice, Bill. How did you get in there so quick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's, that's great. Awesome. really that's nice, AJ. Really awesome. That deserves a heart. Yeah. I'll wow. give it that. I love that. Wow. That's cool. Is that a new person? That was killer. Yeah, that's that um, awesome. I'll stood ahead of. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice, Devin. Very good. Oh, I love <laughs> cool. that, Sander. <laughs> Oh, that's, cool. Character, yes. yeah. that's great would you everybody i just want to tell you uh we are renaming the show we're going to start 2023 off with a new show name uh we think that we feel like the pandemic is mostly uh wrapped up as far as an isolation show <laughs> so we're moving on so please submit names message them to us email them to us however you want if you think that you've got a good name for the show Send them to me. If we select your name, we're going to send you a print from the negative collection. That's Please so do cool. it. Um, and if we, if somebody on the panel selects it, or like if they come up with the idea, we're sending them a print. Like th this is not a contest. This All is right. a come up, come up with the best name for the show. I need to work on this more. How is that not a contest? <laughs> not a contest. <laughs> Wait, I do want to say the last piece was amazing, by the way. It was really, really terrific. Nice the night. last piece, like I was looking, can you go back to me? Like the amount of supplies he, they used on yeah. it, I was thoroughly impressed. Look That's at that list. Really Graphite, really acrylic, new pastel, new pastel ink. Great job. Very well done. It's not a contest because the selection will not be fair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they will be biased. So it's just an un biased. it's an unfair contest. It's <laughs> it's based on what John and I like the most, <laughs> and 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 everybody on the panel, and, and how uh, well it works, and how well it works. This is a very dear show to us. We love doing this on Thursday, yes. so it's really important to us. If your name is not picked, don't be offended. Um, it just means a lot. Yeah. Great job. Nice, That's Jeff. No way. Very nice. It's good to see Jeff has a sketchbook. I know. Well, did you see the previous one? He had like six yeah. on one page. <laughs> I was thinking maybe we should send him one. I thought he just cut up coffee filters and 
you know. He does sometimes. I, hope yeah. I love it. That's nice. Great job, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Oh, that's great. Hi, Gary. Gary, always amazing. Don't need to see Ooh, that. Ooh, Karen, love, 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 love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying. I do not need to see. I don't need to see this person's name either, Marcy. I know Marcy. it's gonna work as soon as I see it. Yeah. Marcy, this is like a new favorite for me. I love that's that. One. There's Gary again. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, that's, oh, cool. that's cool. Great cool. job, Michael. Nice. That's actually, yeah. That blows my mind. <laughs> that was cool, right, Bill? Yeah. yeah. Very well done. Jesus. <laughs> nice, Sally. Nice, Sally. Wow, way to get the crowd in behind her and everything. Great job. That's cool, too. Oh, oh that's, that's so good. <laughs> I love the chest that's hair. A, that deserves like how a you heart. handled that? That's like a really? Rolling Stone illustration. That's a hard. I'm just gonna say Rolling Stone would pay for that. Yeah. That's a hard. I gotta say that chest hair though, like the texture. Oh, oh so great, so great. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's, really, that's great for us. All right, I'm sorry. That's a winner. That's great. Yeah. Oh great. man. Oh, cool. oh, wonderful. Nice. It's Marcy. Oh, I love the flowers. I love the collage there. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, that's very, really cool. Very nice. Wow. Nice. A lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Addy. Addy. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. the shadow and then to the nose. Beautiful. Oh, it's by the way, what do we do? What do we do? Do we teach? And Addy was a student of ours. At, yeah. Addy oh, was. Addie is like a founding student. Yep. Maybe one of maybe our first student, you know. Yeah. Randy. Great job, Randy. Love this piece. That's gorgeous. Beautiful movement with it. Love it. Oh, so nice. That's oh, nice painting. Beautiful texture. Oh, that's, cool. that's great. Uh -oh. Wow. Oh, fun. That's cool. Oh, yes. Ambitious. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> I can't help but think of Thomas Fuchs. That's when fine. I, that. I also liked their name. It was Rats in Fashion. <laughs> Sometimes I get distracted by na the names. I'm like, oh, that's such a cool name. Cool piece. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good job. Oh, oh that's I love so that one. cool. That's very fun. I oh, like I love that. I would put that up in my house. Nice, yeah. fancy. Beautiful job. That's cool, nice. Leslie. Nice. That's nice. Oh, that's really cool. Great job. Love it. Nice. Excellent. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. That's really fun. Oh my gosh, that one's so, I love that one. Yeah. Wow. It's also really distinctive. What are you doing that one in? Is that digital or is that physical? Like, what is that? It's cool. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, art for sure. That is a knockout. Ugh. I was looking at that a few minutes ago on Instagram. Oh, that's killer. It's really nice. That's another great one. Nice. nice. <laughs> Man. So good. Wow. Oh, lovely. Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Fun, Nicole. I like it. <laughs> cool. That's cool too. Nice, Nicole. That's good. Uh oh. I don't know what that is. All right. Here we go. We'll end on this one. There we go. Nice. Great job, everybody. Right, Wonderful. Great. Thank night. you so much. Great. So, so, Timmy, when do we return? 
Oh man. We don't have a break. We're coming back in 2023, right? Yep. Yeah. The first uh, Thursday, which is I think the fourth or fifth. Um yeah, everybody have a great holiday. Um, we are enrolling. Our classes start uh, January 21st. So if you're on the fence, anything like that, um, we are not meeting back for illustration isolation, but John and I are always available. So reach out, shoot us an email, give the school a call. Um, if you have questions about our courses, we're enrolling right now. Um, literally every single course we're enrolling for is scheduled to sell out, like all of them. Uh, we're gonna have our largest student body next semester, which is very exciting. A yep. lot of uh, really talented artists coming into the program and a lot more of them leaving it talented. So, so uh, one last thing, I want to thank everybody. Thank uh, Bill, Cassandra, Timmy, uh, everybody that joined us tonight. Uh, we will be back January 5th. Um, so we're taking our, two weeks off, right? Yep. Our next semester, our next semester starts the 22nd of uh, January. 21st and 22nd, depending on which direction you go, um, concept program or, or character design program or the illustration program. And uh, if anybody has any questions about the program, reach out to Timmy and I. Really fun, everybody, and happy holidays. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. Oh, we'll miss you. Bye. Bye.